recite our Red Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we now hear a word from sacred scripture. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and I will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture 
and they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture in the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he's called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. 
God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come you that are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty? or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous 
into eternal life. <clears throat> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <laughs> of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Many people struggle with guilt and shame over something they've done. It's easy to recall those things that we've done to others for which we must apologize. And during each liturgy, including morning and evening prayer in the church, we pray the confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In that very first part of the confession, we mention only once an acknowledgement of what we have done sinfully. But three times we acknowledge that we are guilty of sins of omission, sins of things that we fail to do, by what we've done and by what we've left undone. We have not, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Why is it that we can quickly and easily recall those sins that we've done, but we struggle to remember the times when our sin was due to something or someone that we have neglected? As we seek to grow in the spiritual life, we must not only acknowledge and bemoan the sins, the actions that we've actually done, but we must be diligent in reviewing our lives and seeing those times when we failed to step up in the Christian life, not intervening for good, not helping someone in need, or simply ignoring another person altogether. Jesus addresses the sins of omission in today's gospel passage from Matthew. It begins, When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. The Son of Man, of course, is Jesus. His coming in his glory is his return, his second coming. All the angels are coming with him, it says. And we know that angels live and exist in heaven, so the Son of Man is coming in his glory, and all the angels with him from heaven. And then it says, then, then... At that end time, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Twice, twice in this one sentence, the word glory is used. We use the word glory in church all the time. I mean, we've just sung, glory to God in the highest. At the end of the Psalms and Canticles in morning and evening prayer, we conclude with the doxology, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Glory means to give adoration, praise, or thanksgiving. Yet, it can become such a routine part of what we say the idea that we are called to give Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, to give Him glory, that can slip past us and we can just end up saying the words out of rote repetition. In doing so, we fail to give God and Jesus the proper glory they deserve. But would we ever catch that within ourselves? In enlisting our sins, would we ever apologize to God for simply running over the word glory in our prayers, not giving true glory to God in our worship, but just kind of going through the motions. 
As we look back at the gospel passage, picking up on the fact that Jesus is talking about the end times when he says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, just a few lines down from there it says, then the king will say to those at his right hand, come you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. This is the first time in this section that the king is mentioned. And this isn't like the other parables we've been hearing from Jesus and Matthew's gospel throughout the year. Jesus is calling himself the king, the anointed one, the ruler of heaven and earth, the one who is owed glory. And as king, Jesus invites those who are called to inherit the kingdom that has been prepared for them from the beginning of time. The inheritance of the heavenly kingdom isn't something that's just accidentally fallen into place. It hasn't just evolved over time with doctrine and theology. The inheritance of the heavenly kingdom, for those who have been blessed by the Father, has been part of God's plan before the beginning of time. In this kingdom, Christ the King rules and reigns. And those who give him glory, proper glory, real glory, are part of the royal family of that kingdom. Well, naturally, the question arises, well, who is in the kingdom and who's out of the kingdom? Well, Jesus answers that question. But take note that Jesus does not point out any sins of commission the bad things people have done that keeps them out of the inheritance. It's the good things that people have left undone that keeps them out. The sins of omission. He says, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. When? When did we do these things, they asked. Just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, the royal family, you did it to me. Then he turns it around and says to those who neglected to do those things, those guilty of the sin of omission, that they will be sent away from the kingdom of heaven. Both sets of people, The ones who did good works and those who failed to do good works, they're both baffled in the story. Neither of them remember doing or not doing for others. When did we do these things, one side asks, while the other side asks, when did we not do those things? The side that has done these things has done them from their very core, from the center of their being, They give as a natural response to the need of others. Their giving is a part of who they are, and so they don't even think twice about helping someone out. And the side who has not done these things, they don't recall not doing these things. They are self-focused, self-centered, accustomed to ignoring the needs of others. So they have no recollection, no memory of not doing the things they're accused of not doing. In the story that Jesus tells, he says that the king will separate the sheep from the goats. Now think about the nature of sheep. They are docile, they are managed, they are led, they are dependent upon the shepherd. Goats, on the other hand, are stubborn, difficult to herd. They're very frustrating animals. It's true that there are times when we can be like sheep at one time and then goats another time. But the general sense is this. What is at the core of our being? What position do we operate from instinctively? Do we permit the shepherd, the king, to lead us and guide us? And if so, how do we show that in our lives? Or are we stubborn and self-focused 
refusing to be led, going where we want to go, doing what we want to do, not listening, not following. If Jesus Christ, the King, is at the center of our lives, if we allow him to rule from his throne, guiding us with his teaching, following his example of love, serving him by serving others, then the list of our sins of omission will be very small. But we have to be aware of ourselves. As Christians, are we sheep following the shepherd? Or are we Christians who are simply goats dressed in sheep's clothing? Because it's easy to say. It's easy to say. It is easy to say that Christ is our king. It is easy to say that we love one another. It is easy to say and even sing glory to God in the highest. It's easy to say, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. But it is something altogether different to put that praise and adoration into practice. And so one of the last questions that comes to mind is, how? How do we do the things for Jesus? How do we live as sheep? How do we give God true glory that goes beyond lip service? You're already doing it. Because you're here. Right now. In this present moment. This morning. When our church is packed with parishioners. Don't you feel the energy? Don't you feel the the excitement? Don't you feel the sense of the royal family of God amongst you? But when we skip church and our pews are empty, the energy of those souls who aren't here is missed and longed for. Where are they? Where have you been? We miss you. Our greeters, not to mention everybody at Emmanuel because it's part of our um, uh, historical um, reputation, but our greeters in particular, they're so good at welcoming the stranger, making visitors and guests feel welcomed. The treats and coffee that we offer in the parlor after 8 o'clock and that we will offer in the parish hall after this 10-15 service helps to make strangers and guests feel welcomed but also feeds them, feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty. And I'm not talking about those of us that could go home and, and fix us a big meal of leftovers and things like that. I'm talking about the way in which you, as Emmanuel Parish, do such a beautiful job of welcoming in those who are in obvious need. In particular, our homeless brothers and sisters. They come, and they're among us, and they're with us, and you greet them, and you welcome them, and you invite them, and we sit with them, and we eat, and we drink, and we participate in the life of Jesus Christ in our midst. You're already doing it, Emmanuel. There are so many other ways that it's being done. When you look at our Acts ministry, tonight our group will be at Cornerstone Rescue Mission. They go once a month, the fourth Sunday of the month in the evening. They go to Cornerstone Rescue Mission and they help serve those who are in need. And I noticed uh, the sign-up list for this morning, before before the 8 o'clock service anyway, we needed a couple more cooks. And Cora Koss is going to organize that if you say, oh, I can't cook. You don't have to cook. Just do what Cora tells you, and it'll happen miraculously and beautifully. Participate in it. But even the food doesn't just fall out of the sky. The food is donated by you. The money for the food purchased for the meals comes from your donations and pledges. The baskets of love that were given out last week through the Acts ministry. That also fed the hungry because of your generosity. The Angel Tree Project that we have going right now. In in a way, we visit those who are in prison because we provide clothing, clothing the naked, and toys to children children of parents who are in jail or prison. But we don't do it on our behalf. We don't say, oh, you know, with love from the good people at Emmanuel. No. We say, to my child, I love you. 
have a Merry Christmas love mom or love dad. We do it on their behalf so that those who are incarcerated can retain some parental dignity. And so when the gifts come, not from us but from them, it's a way that we are able to spiritually visit the prisoner with kindness and love, care and concern. Your donations of furniture and household goods to our homelessness to home program, it helps to give shelter to those who need it. But it's beyond all of those things. It's also the donation of your time. The time that you give to make these things happen. It's the donation of your prayer. The prayer that you pray at home where no one is looking but God the Father. When you pray for the success of these programs, you are participating in the ministry of Jesus Christ. There are so many different ways to participate in all the ministries at Emmanuel. And you all are doing so much. As members of the royal family of Jesus Christ, you are doing so much. And it is in this doing that we say with our actions, Glory to God in the highest! It is in those actions that we say, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. And so, as we prepare to meet Advent 1 next Sunday, as we move through our week, we have two questions to wrestle with and to reflect upon. What have we done? And what have we left undone? Amen. put our faith into action, we have to know what we believe, and so standing, we turn to page 358, proclaim to the world, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternity God and the Father, God from God.
pray for Christ Church and the world using form three of the prayers of the people, which can be found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving at this time, either silently or aloud. conclude our prayer together with the yellow bookmark, prayer for the election of a bishop as we pray together. <coughs> Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a bishop for this diocese that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Using the form of confession found on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, and give you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Good morning. Welcome, especially to any visitors and guests who may be with us today. As I mentioned in the sermon, immediately following in the parish hall, we will have some coffee and treats, and I hope that everyone will take some time for uh, fellowship and friendship to abound there. Uh, there is much blessing in that time following our service, and so I hope everyone will participate and partake. As I also mentioned in the sermon, the mission meal is tonight, and uh, there was a need, at least before the 8 o'clock service, uh, for assistance with cooking the meal. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet that is on the food certificate table. You can look there and see if there is still a need. Um, I also wanted to mention many of the ministries that I mentioned in the sermon um, are flow through and from the Acts ministry. It's an incredible form of outreach to our community where we are working on building relationship with our brothers and sisters throughout Rapid City, and they are meeting tomorrow at 3.30. If you have not yet attended an Acts meeting, I would really, I strongly encourage you and, and invite you to come just to see what it's about. You know, and I hate to call it a meeting because it doesn't feel like a meeting. It feels, it feels more like prayerful fellowship in some way. And so I do hope that you'll feel invited to come and to participate. Uh, one of the ministries that Acts is in the midst of right now is the Angel Tree Ministry, as I mentioned in the sermon. And so there are, um, I think there were still some slots available. What they've done is divided up the children so that uh, in the past you took one child and you got a toy and uh, an article of clothing. They've divided it up now so that uh, one child, it's still divided between clothing and toy, um, but in order to share, allow more people to participate at Emmanuel, they've divided it up um, so you can take one or both of the gifts for uh, each child. You can do multiple children if that's what you would like to do. Um, but the Angel Tree sign-up is out front, as are the envelopes with the names of your children if you've already signed up. Uh, in two weeks from now, we will have the King's Men will be leading a Christmas tree hunt in the Black Hills. Uh, it ought to be a really fun experience of families going with the King's Men, and they'll help uh, pick the tree, chop down the tree, tie the tree to your car, and all of that stuff. Um, it, 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 we used to, you know, Emmanuel used to be able to decorate this whole place in greenery, the gathering of the greens, um, but the fire marshal has since ruled that that's not permitted. Um, but we still want to decorate in the courtyard and other areas where, where we are able. Um, there is a sign-up sheet for the King's Men's Tree Hunt so that we can have an idea of how many families, how many people are going to participate because we do have to get permits from the four service and so if you could sign up if your family is interested in participating please sign up uh, outside the parlor today next to that sign up sheet are vestry nomination forms we have several vestry members who will be rotating off their terms expire at the end of this year um, the vestry nomination forms are due into our office December 31st and then we will have our vestry elections at the annual meeting which is on Sunday January 28th I would like you to prayerfully consider running for the vestry or nominating someone that you feel would be a blessing to our vestry. Our vestry is an incredibly committed, uh, devoted, uh, thoughtful, and um, I want to say foresighted. Is that right? Not farsighted. Foresighted. Yeah. They see into the future. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I know. Something about it doesn't sound right. Sounds like they all need glasses. But they... <clears throat> But they're wonderful, positive energy, and so uh, we, we always hate losing folks rotating off, but our bylaws mandate that uh, every so many years, uh, certain people have to rotate off, and new energy, new blood, new spirit gets elected onto the vestry. So please prayerfully consider serving on our vestry. If you have questions about what that means, you can see our senior warden, Michael Luciano, our junior warden, Bob Ermish, myself, or any vestry member for that matter. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
who are not among us at this time during the prayers of the people. Is there anyone here who would like a special blessing? Birthday. I'll be polite. I won't ask. I'll just ask, when is it? Wednesday. Oh. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as her day is.
Heavenly Father, we ask that you send the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, the healer, upon Kathy. We ask that you, O Lord, King and Creator of the universe, that you guide the hands of the doctors, nurses, and aides who will tend to her. Bless her with health and holiness and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, look with kindness, compassion, and mercy upon your beloved daughter. Relieve Lynn of all the ailments, body, mind, and soul. Make her whole and complete, O Lord, and fill her with the spirit of your blessing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the King. Amen. Lord God, we ask for your spirit of comfort and peace and consolation for your daughter as she grieves the loss of her friend. We know that you have the power, O oh Lord, to wipe away all tears. We know that you are the ultimate source of our comfort and our consolation. Send that spirit now, O oh Lord. Fill Greta with, her, with your peace. All this we ask through the power of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm sorry. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me of my sins of commission and omission. Continue in our Red Book of Common Prayer on page 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. certainly welcome to remain standing or be seated according to your preference or comfort. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. 
On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, For the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Jesus said, when you fed the least one of these or gave to drink, you did it unto me. And so in the Episcopal Church, we say, let all who are spiritually hungry and thirsty, who are members of the royal family through baptism, regardless of denomination, are all welcome to receive Holy Eucharist with us this day. We also have gluten-free hosts available. If that's part of your need, please let me know when I get to you. The body of Christ brings the life.
serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.